So a viewer has asked about Samantha Markle's uh, digs on her sister uh, Megan Markle. So that's what this video will be about. I hope you like the video. If you do like it, please do like it. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So, of course, I did a little bit of research about Samantha and Megan and this whole family dynamic, and it's pretty interesting. So I'll tell you just a little bit about that first, and then we'll get into the cards. Okay, so 1965, Samantha Markle, now Grant, uh, instead of Markle, was born to Thomas and Rosalind Markle. She's the Duchess of Sussex, that's a hard word, half-sister, 17 years older than Megan, who was born in 1982, and but also in California. Now, in 1988, when Megan was eight years old, her mother, Doria, divorced Thomas. And Samantha had issued, her older sister had issued an apology on a British talk show recently, saying that she never meant to trash Megan, but had criticized the Duchess before and after the royal wedding. Uh, so on Australian TV, Samantha accused her sister of, of, using, of not using her financial resources to help their father, who declared bankruptcy in 2016, saying that Megan spends in a weekend, what she spends in a weekend would greatly help her dad. So rags to riches, tabloids reported that um, the Duchess grew up in a rough part of Southern California, but Samantha says that's not true, and uh, tabloids want to create a ghetto African-American uh, to princess story and uh, she said that they were uh, raised in a very beautiful upper class uh, upper middle class home in the San Fernando Valley of Southern California near uh, gangland Samantha spread online rumors that her sister faked the two pregnancies Megan publicized that her sister was a promiscuous high school dropout who lost custody of her three children and the Duchess of Sussex's that's a hard word attorney could file under California's anti slap law, that's S-L-A-P-P -P law, to allow dismissal of Samantha's case if Megan's statements were made in the uh, public interest or are protected speech under the First Amendment, Megan's statements. So BuzzFeed News said Samantha is Megan's biggest troll, spending years uh, accusing her sister of social climbing into the British uh, monarchy. Samantha's Twitter had been suspended, giving Megan additional uh, ammunition toward her sister's credibility. And the Duchess could uh, argue the doctrine of unclean hands, a legal doctrine, applying to her sister acting unethically and barring Samantha from receiving any relief. Samantha Marco's uh, leg suit, uh, leg suit lawsuit was filed in March uh, in Florida federal court where she lives and could force both sisters to reveal sensitive personal information. Samantha could be asked about her high school record and child custody issues, and Megan could be grilled about her family relationships, but could also ask for a change of venue to California where the law is favorable to her because anti-slap motions, and remember that's a, a, a thing in California, slap, S-L-A-P-P, anti-slap motions must be heard within 30 days. If the Duchess wins a motion to dismiss, she can ask the court to order Samantha to pay her legal fees and court costs. Okay, so Mima Rawlings, viewer, ask her, ask this question. Uh, viewer Mima Rawlings asked this question. Thank you, uh, Mima. Is it Mima or Mima? That's what uh, in the South we would call our grandmother, Mima. So, not sure exactly how that fits for you. Probably just Mima Rawlings. Um, so, Samantha Markle's lawsuit versus the Duchess uh, of Sussex, Meghan Markle. Is anything going to come of that? So, that's very interesting. I mean, I've got uh, that kind of family dynamic, not uh, um, corroded like this, but as far as there were three kids that grew up. Then there was a 10 year span, there was myself, and then seven years later, about the youngest of our siblings. So the first three were kind of a unit. And then after 10 years, I was kind of an only child. And then after seven years, there was the final baby. So, you know, Samantha Markle and Meghan Markle, Meghan came along, and you can think, stole the light, stole the star power right away. Before we do too much more. Let's have a moment of meditation.
okay? There's a little bit of malintention uh, behind a lot of this. <clears throat> so. And um, so it makes me a little uncomfortable. But um, so will this lawsuit um, come to benefit Samantha? Interesting. Let's see what the cards can tell us. Six cards. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. Okay, what kind of cards tell us about this uh, lawsuit with Samantha against her younger sister, Megan? It's such a shame. Signifier card. This page is swords. So the page is the weakest of the royal court cards. Swords are truth, justice, rules, and law. This isn't giving um, truth, justice, rules, and law a very big foot up. Okay, this is just a, a message uh, coming to us saying, what about this? The challenge to that is this uh, King of Swords. That's interesting. So, you know, right away, this makes me want to compare these two cards as if this is representing Samantha saying, listen, this is my truth, all right? It's a small message, but this is what I've got to say. But challenged by, and it, you know, it, it, it occurs to me this could be how a sibling feels, uh, jealousy. And then, but it's challenged by this King of Swords, the absolute ruler of truth, justice, rules, and law. So this, um, these hurt feelings are, are challenged by um, the, the truth, truth. The base of this reading then is this Knight of Cups. Well, the base of the reading is this knight, this energy, this uh, fighter with a, an offer of compassion. And um, maybe the knight isn't enough. Past of this reading, uh, with this eight of swords, is just feeling trapped. And uh, again, I think this is uh, Samantha. I think it's her uh, feeling trapped in whatever it is that uh, her sister was able to grab onto and that she um, can't seem to find. The sky this reading uh, with this nine of cups. Yeah, in the sky this reading, yeah, the nine of cups is the uh, wealthy uh, um, um, lady. Okay, she's got everything she. This is Megan. She's got everything she wants. Her table is absolutely full. All her cups are upright. She even looks a little smug about it in her magnificent home that she's in. So, wow, we've gone right into Samantha energy. And the likely outcome uh, for this with the Seven of Pentacles is wondering if I've done enough. And this works for either party because from Samantha's side, it's always going to be wondering, have I done enough to get what I want? And from uh, the Duchess side, it's have I done enough to uh, make peace with my sister, to quell this uh, problem? Uh, have I given it enough value? Let's do four more cards just for the heck of it. Okay, what will come of this lawsuit uh, with Sam, Samantha against her sister, uh, Megan. The very self of that question is this King of Wands. It's a big plan. It's a great big plan. The uh, environment that that's in is right here with this King of Cups. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of emotion wrapped up in this thing. Okay, This is, if you've ever seen Two Jealous Sisters, which I have, there's a lot in this. There's a plan backed by a lot of, in the environment of a lot of emotion. The hopes and the fears for this is that there's temperance, uh, finding a balance, uh, emotions, two cups here. Uh, the temperance is finding a, a, some sort of emotional balance. That's the hopes and the fears. Because it can never, it'll never be over, ever. And then the uh, likely outcome with this page of wands is the weakest member of the court. He brings a message of a plan. It's a weak plan, but it's the best thing they've got. So, as far as will Samantha make out is, this hasn't been specifically about money, except right here, uh, where either one could be talking about, and yeah, they put enough value into this thing. But it's all been about emotions, and um, it may never be over. Well, the things that I've laid out in the cards have been pretty accurate, so we'll see um, you know, what you think about this. And if you have questions, I'm more than happy to answer your questions. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm doing this. So send me questions, and we'll uh, try to get them in. 
Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. Okay, so the Witch's Tarot. You know, this is uh, by Ellen Duncan, and I'm not sure who actually publishes these cards. Um, illustrated by Mark Evans. I haven't done any, any research into it. And, um... But, I mean, they're just an inexpensive little pack of cards that I bought on a whim. And I don't use them very much. Although I should. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the cards. I think they're probably a knockoff of something else. Uh, the, uh, the cards themselves are very basic. They're easy to use. They shuffle nicely. I mean, there's a lot going for these cards, actually. And then the depictions on them, I don't know if you'll be able to see them that well because they're kind of small cards, and I'm not sure about the distance uh, between the camera and the table for this, uh, these little cards. But, I mean, they're nice pictures. They're thoughtful. Someone has, uh, they, has put a lot of intention into making these represent uh, the symbols that they should. So um, I don't tend to give these the credit they, they deserve by not using them enough. And um, so I hope I change that, but probably I won't. Uh, I spread the cards out like this so that you can see them. And I used to always want to see more of the cards that readers were using uh, when I was just viewing videos. And also, it's a good way to get people's energy into the cards. If you're doing a reading, you can let them spread it out if they don't want to shuffle. So there you go, which is Tarot. I'm Mark, my journey through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now. really make a big difference. Thank you.